Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video I'm going to be doing a dive into my travel journal, which is this little baby over here. For a little bit of background information, myself and my mum went on a two month road trip up to far north Queensland and back down to the ACT and it was such an amazing trip and I'm very excited to get into this video. Let's have a look at the journal itself. So I took an A6 pocket size journal on the trip with me. It is half the size of an A5, which you can see the comparison over here. So the A5 is the typical bullet journal size and this is what it looks like. Let's get into the flip through. I did prepare a few pages at the beginning of of the journal before we left on the holiday. Here's a small map of Australia and I basically traced our route all the way up and all the way down listing out some of the cities and towns that we visited. The page next to that one I think it was places that I wanted to camp at because the next page is things that I'd like to see slash do where I wrote down a bunch of things. Actually I didn't do a single thing on that page. Then we have things to buy beforehand and things to pack. This is kind of like a brainstorming page before I actually compiled my physical packing checklist which is this section over here. As you can see I've used this little Dutch door that opens outwards and it actually doubles on the other side as well so that I have six pages worth of packing checklist. Why do I have so much stuff? It's because I'm camping in a tent so I've got to take all the camping gear and the cooking gear and also clothes and stuff like that. So lots of things that I took on the trip. Next up we have a little calendar. So I've done July and August which were the two months that we went away for. I ended up using a pencil to draft out the travel plan that I wanted to do and then using a pen afterwards to to write what we actually did during the trip. There's a bit of a colors code section. I don't think I did that on purpose it was unintentional but mostly all of it should be black i also have a section which i'm not going to show you of my pen pals addresses that i had on the page just so that i could send them a postcard originally what i had intended to do was to do a lot of drawings in this notebook of the places that we were visiting as you can see over here you have port macquarie um, and then on the next point you have the view from north brother there you go that's a viewpoint in somewhere close to port macquarie and i actually only did a couple of drawings i did brisbane as well which is this one over here and then i also have harvey bay pedestrian <laughs> bridge oh actually i did a few little drawings up to Port Douglas and then I kind of stopped doing that because I realized that we didn't have as much time and I actually enjoyed scrapbooking a little bit more. So this is the beginning of the scrapbooking where I would go into the visitor information centers and collect all of their brochures and then I would cut out sections of the brochures that I wanted to stick into my journal. This brochure is from my dive that I did out of Port Douglas. Here are some clips from the diving by the way. Anyway, some of the things that I took from information centers were maps of places. I find that maps are really good for travel journaling. This is the map of Port Douglas, which is actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. And I also used a pen to trace out the roads that we walked. On day 20, we have the Daintree National Park, which was a super beautiful location. And what we did was we drove all the way up and we did have to pay a ferry to cross a river for $47, which is not even the most expensive ferry that we paid to cross the river. We'll get back to that. One of the things we also visited was the Mossman Gorges. Again, a little map and things like that. And I would stick in some photos so that I could remember exactly what we did. Here, I did do a little bit of a drawing of my favorite Daintree facts. So just like the buttress roots and the strangling figs, which were really cool buttresses help stabilize the tree in rainforest where the ground is typically quite muddy and trees could easily fall over so they've developed that way and then the strangling figs are these little fig seeds will come and implant themselves close to an existing tree and then they'll start growing and they'll eventually strangle the tree next up we have some more pictures of places that we went to see a lot of this is just really cute little scrapbooking techniques and here is a really fun page this is when we went to cooktown now the map for cooktown that i found was quite large and so one way that I ended up displaying it in my journal was putting a little pocket and then folding it down so that it would fit into the pocket. I open it up and basically on this map, the things that you can see on the map are handwritten. So like things where we stayed, the things that we did, places that were interesting to me. And I've just labeled those with another pen. So just a bunch of little things. And I actually really liked Cooktown. A lot of people say that you either love or you hate Cooktown. And I can definitely understand why people would hate Cooktown. But I personally absolutely loved Cooktown and it was 
such a nice town to stay at for a couple of nights. On to the next section. So the next section is the Cape York Adventure. Now Cape York Peninsula in Australia is basically 1,000 kilometers of dirt road, the base all the way to the tip of Australia, the northernmost tip of Australia. So where you see my finger going, that's the track that you go up all the way to Pajinka, which is the indigenous name for the tip of Australia. And that is 1,000 kilometers up and 1,000 kilometers all the way back down. You could also do adventures to the sides to the national parks, which is more dirt road, but the car that we took was not really suited for that kind of terrain. So we did Cape York in literally five days. We went all the way up and all the way back down in five days, which is not recommended because it's a lot of dirt road to cover in a short amount of time. Fruit Bat Falls is one of the falls that you can stop at on the way up and on the way down. We stopped there, so beautiful. I absolutely loved Fruit Bat Falls. It was definitely my favorite falls of the trip until that point. Over here, it's a sticker and you can see that the roads are really corrugated on this sticker, which is why I ended up buying it because one of the most annoying things about Cape York was the corrugations. And corrugations is like little bumps on the road that form naturally when cars drive very fast over non-sealed roads. And basically a little rock can create corrugations and it's really frustrating to drive on. So you have to like find the exact right speed to drive across it. Otherwise you feel your whole body just vibrating. <laughs> I had a lot to write about Cape York and then it was the end and I was really happy to be back on firm land. When we came back from Cape York, I was so done with driving on dirt roads, but we ended up going to Hopevale and Ellen Beach, stopping at Isabella Falls on the way. Now there is a little bit of dirt road getting to both of these places, but it's actually mostly sandy roads, which was a really awesome experience for me because I've never driven on sand and we didn't have to deflate the tires or anything because the sand was quite hard. Went all the way there, did a few puddle crossings that were quite deep, but we just like ran straight through them because we saw other cars that were similar in clearance to our car so we just gunned it and it was a really fun experience but yeah there were a lot of dirt roads. Over here in this next section I have the Atherton Tablelands and over here this is an innovation that I put in. Basically instead of sticking these maps on the actual journal paper I stuck them back to back to each other and then using washi tape I stuck them into my journal. At the top you can see a little stamp which is from the visitor information centers. Something I discovered was that at some visitor information centers you can collect stamps. I also started doing these little pull out sections of my journal because I thought it made it more interactive and more fun. Five waterfalls that we visited in one day on the Atherton Tablelands and they were so cool to visit. It was pouring that day, I do remember. There was also this tree that fell down and blocked the whole path and we had to move part of the tree so that we could drive around. Definitely a fun experience. Over here we have a small section. I have day 33 and day 37 and day 33 we went to this historic Herberton village which is basically a collection of little houses that have been kind of restored as the way they were back in like the olden days. This is a little map of Karanda and Karanda is a small little town on the Atherton Tablelands. You can usually take the Sky Rail or the Scenic Rail to get there to go back which is what a lot of people do but we chose to drive there because it was expensive to do that. Wanted to save our money for other things such as my scuba diving trip that I went on. This is a three-day liveaboard. Basically I went on to a boat and we lived on the boat for two nights and three days. I did 11 dives over those days and I'm going to be inserting some footage of some of the dives that I did. It was absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. The experience was awesome, even though it is winter and the conditions out at sea were like really rocky and I had to take lots of seasickness tablets. And one of the really cool things is we did two night dives and it was like pitch black and you get to see the life comes alive <laughs> under the water and it's so amazing. And one of the things that you can experience after a liveaboard is actually land sickness. And the idea is that in enclosed spaces, your body still thinks you're on a boat. Your body just decides to move back and forth and you feel a little bit nauseous. And I did experience that when we came back from the trip. So that was a really cool trip and I absolutely loved it. next page this is probably one of my most packed pages because I forgot to include a section when I was filling it out so I had to go back and add it in the idea behind this one is that I've got a lot of stuff so day 38 is an area where we went from Cairns all the way down to Cardwell stopping at a few places like the Babinda boulders which is circled on that we also did the beautiful Murray Falls which was a place where we could swim and spend a bit of time and we arrived at the right time of the day where the sun was hitting on the water the water was ice cold but at least the sun was really nice.
And then we continued all the way down to Cardwell. Now, I know that some of the names of these cities aren't going to mean anything, but you have a little bit of a map if you're interested. The next section is for the Wallerman Falls, and I had a little insert over here. The photo that you saw is the Wallerman Falls, which is the highest single drop waterfall in Australia. And on the inside of that, you have a bit of information about a town called Ingham, which is the town which we stopped at on the way out of Wallerman Falls. Here is a larger map that I've also included in the area. So this kind of shows you another little option and basically we stayed at Lucinda, Ingham is in the middle, Wallerman Falls and then we were going down to Townsville and we also stopped at the Little Crystal Creek which was I think one of my favorite places to stop at because as the name suggests Crystal Creek the water was crystal clear it was beautiful and I wanted to spend more time next up in this booklet we have my little section on Magnetic Island and I have a little Dutch door here because on the inside of the Dutch door is a map of Magnetic Island which I cut out from another brochure we stayed in Nelly Bay and then we did a little bit of road tripping around the island we did take our car there which in the end I probably wouldn't recommend because it was a definitely walkable island and there's buses and the buses come very often very frequently very reliable we stayed here at a place called X Base Nomads. I really loved Magnetic Island. There was so much wildlife and things to do and see and we were able to cover everything in the short amount of time that we were there. My highlights were definitely seeing koalas in the wild and little rock wallabies that you're allowed to feed. I also got to do more diving whilst I was on the island and I visited the SS Yongala wreck which is one of the most famous dives in Australia. It's a shipwreck. It's a deep dive so only advanced open water dive plus on top of that I also really loved the Museum of Underwater Art which is an installation near one of the reefs Next up, we went down to Ellie Beach. So again, you can see the map of Australia and Ellie Beach is this section here. And we did do a scenic flight over Ellie Beach, which is the scene that you can see over the Whitsundays. So the Whitsundays is like a bunch of islands and they are stunning. to my next sections we went to Great Keppel Island. Now this is a little map that I included because the maps that I found of Great Keppel Island were either too large or too small and so I had to kind of draw it and I drew a little bit of the trail that we took by foot so we spent an entire day there and if you're interested basically on a Friday you can take the first ferry out which is at 7 30 in the morning and take the last ferry back into town which is at 6 30 at night and the ferry was super interesting because when it was dark you can't see anything so you had to get onto the ferry and the ferry docks right onto the sand kind of giving that really like wild life experience and it was just a very cool day we also spent some time in Yapoon which is the map that you see on the right hand side of the page Page. On day 51, we went to Byfield National Park. Byfield National Park is so beautiful. So as you can see in this larger map here, we stayed in Yapoon and we drove up to Byfield National Park. And the things that you could do in Byfield National Park, so if we come across to this side of the map, is just these little areas where you can walk around. Now this section over here with the red tracks and stuff is a four-wheel drive track, so we did not do that. I also did some swimming at Upper Stony Creek. Super, super beautiful. Day 52 is when we went to Agnes Water and the town of 1770. The town of 1770 is named that way after the year that Captain Cook first came to Australia in 1770. 1770 is also a place where you can see the sunrise and the sunset from the same place over the ocean. It's like a really unique location. <laughs> Day 54 we were leaving Agnes and we stopped in Bundaberg for a couple of hours. I really liked Bundaberg. There were loads of things to do and see in Bundaberg, notably Bagara Berries, which is a place where you can get fresh strawberries. And we bought two kilos of strawberries for $25 and they were the reddest, plumpiest, juiciest strawberries I've ever had. We also went to this other place where they had strawberry ice cream, which was freshly made strawberry ice cream. And it was so, so good. Moving on, we also stayed or spent one night at Rainbow Beach, which is the gateway, I guess you could call it, to Fraser 
Treasure Island. So we also visited Inskip Point. Next up, we have Sunshine Coast. Now here is a map that is folded in. It's just a very big map. So I, I wanted to include it because we drove down from Rainbow Beach all the way to the Sunshine Coast. So the black pen marks is the route that we took. Anyway, we're getting close to the end of this journal and the end of our trip. So day 57 is just, I think I wrote a little bit of something. I think I wanted to stick in a map of the Gold Coast, which is where my friend lives, but obviously didn't find one. Day 58, we drove to Forster. Forster is a really nice town actually. And we walked around and it was absolutely beautiful. Had lunch at this restaurant called Spice Monkey. So good, highly recommend. And then day 59 was the end of the road trip and we drove all the way back down to Canberra. I have a few stats, which I haven't completed, but the big stats is that we drove 10,782 kilometers over 59 days. We spent 38 nights in a tent, which was, yeah, pretty respectable, I guess. I would like to like put more stats in, like how many gelatos we ate or things like that, but we'll get there. Other things that I have in this journal are things we didn't need. So I wrote down a list. We had a lot of stuff in the car. It was very packed. There were definitely things in there that we did not need. I also have a budget section, which I have not yet filled out completely. We did actually calculate all of our expenses during the trip, which we have on an Excel spreadsheet. And I didn't include it in this because this journal is a little bit too small. So that dog outside will not stop barking. I also have this little page where I have a grid spacing cheat sheet because at the beginning when I was planning things out, I just wanted to know a bit more about spacing. So yeah, this is my journal from the trip. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. I absolutely loved doing this travel journal whilst I was on the trip and on the road. And to be able to flip back through such an amazing experience is just so cool. If you have any questions about this journal or anything else that I didn't cover in this video, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and I will see you in my next one very, very soon. Bye!